Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny object, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Elevated Femmes Movement. Today, I have with me Vero Diaz. She is um, an integrative wellness coach for female and non-binary leaders, executives, creatives, and healers. I'm so glad I didn't didn't mess that up because I was like, okay, I don't want to seem like I'm reading it, but then of course I'm reading it and we're all just being real here, guys. (laughs) So I'm so excited to chat with Vero today. Um, Vero is a fellow Latina and um, she's doing some really great things in the online space. And, you know, I feel like you have a very unique way of working with people. You kind of blend a few different things. Um, You're an artist too. So I'm just excited to chat some more with you today. I've done a live stream with Vero on her Instagram. I think it was like a few weeks ago or Mm -hmm. maybe a month ago already. I feel like time is flying. I don't know where time is going. August, like I blinked and August was gone. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so here we are. Vero, please tell us a little bit more about you. Um, I know you do photography. So tell us a little bit more about like what, where you like, started um with everything that you're doing now like maybe where you went to like what you went to school for um share with us if you've always like wanted to be an entrepreneur and um and then we'll take it from there beautiful thank you so much for having me here on your beautiful podcast um we really had a good time in our life so it's great to be here so thank you and a little bit about about me to answer one question about the entrepreneurship, yes, I've always loved selling mm. ever since I was very young with my sister, I have an older sister. So we would sell from cakes when she got a little oven for uh, Christmas one day. So we would like right away, we're like, we can sell the cakes. <laughs> and we go outside and sell them to the neighbors. So we didn't do so well, but it was a good start. And then it, it <laughs> took me. <laughs> right you you can start small you start somewhere (laughs) exactly and it was a great experience and it didn't stop us um then we went to start um other little things but the big one was a jewelry business when I was uh around 13 so um from 13 to 15 or 16 I had a jewelry business with with my sister but then after that I kind of stopped business I moved to Canada um, from Mexico and uh, Guatemala, that's where I grew up, and then moved to uh, Canada uh, in Ontario. So um, there, I did my undergrad in uh, environmental studies and Latin American studies. So that was kind of like um, the beginnings of my search um, in academia of like what are the solutions for all the situations like the global global situation of climate, of poverty, of gender disparities, and all um, what we would call like oppressions mm. or or the UN, you know, the, the goals like to stop all these things. So yeah, so I really went really deep in, in terms of literature, d- looking at culture and art. Um, and then in the environmental field, looking at the like real life solutions, like community gardens or... Um, global governance, water sovereignty, all these different things that are all stemming um, in focusing on sovereignty, really, of, of self, of communities, and of different groups. And um, so that was really good. And it all went um, more and more looking at uh, myself as well. And um, in my master's, I was able to do... Um, a really cool program where you created your own uh, guide guided journey. So okay. that's a uh, York University. It was really, really um, it's a very um, innovative 
one. And in my cohort, we had a lot of different artists and different people from different backgrounds, like sciences and like different different focuses. And there's a so it was a big group of, of artists and women of color, people of color. And um, so that was very, very inspiring. And there I, I really wanted to focus on uh, looking at my indigenous roots as a form of knowledge, uh, of knowing, of learning, and of healing and transforming. So that was really, really good uh, way of getting into that. And from there, uh, I looked at the transformation as as kind of like a methodology of um, for self and, and community. So that's kind of like my background. That's great. That's great. So um, I know that you have... Um, a very spiritual side to you. So I want to, I want to chat a little bit more about that too, because on <laughs> your Instagram, we talked about a little bit about like your family and um, like some of the gifts that, you know, you have. And so I, to me, that's so cool. I've always been very interested in um, spirituality and mm-hmm. just, and I share this with you, but like not always trusting myself and my own spirituality and I feel like it's one of those things like you just kind of like learn more about yourself the more that you dive into it and it's just it becomes it becomes so cool the more aware that you become to to like this really great power that we all have um so to share with the listeners you guys listening um I shared on Vero's Instagram that when we were um, I guess it was before, oh, we we had a connection call. So we had a connection call and we were just kind of chatting about, okay, how can, you know, collaborate. And, you know, we Mm -hmm. were both in the same coaching program. And so we were talking about auras and then, so I'm sitting there and Vito's telling me about, you know, our family and how some people can see auras. And I'm like, Hmm. Hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, wait a minute. Is so is an aura really supposed to be like this outline around you? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, I think I can see yours. (laughs) So it was this really, it was kind of funny because I didn't know that I could, I never really like paid attention. It was never something that I Mm -hmm. like when I'm with someone or in a live, like I'm not there like, okay, let me see if I can see people's auras. So it was this great like discovery that I made. um, And it was just really cool. So um, but yeah, so tell us a little bit about this like spiritual side of you and how you use it a little bit to not a little bit, but you use that. That's like part of mm-hmm. it's part of what you do to yes. help people. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for, for mentioning that. So um in in my master's, just I guess like following the story is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so one of the pillars was um, connecting to my artistry. Like, what is my practice as an artist? And uh, then the other, another pillar was what is my like my background, right? Like, like, like the roots, like in the indigenous roots. What does that mean? Even like to reclaim it, if if like for generations there hasn't been a connection um, very deep, but but it is. It's like this back, pull back and forth of is it is it not? Is it possible? Is it uh, spoken? Is it non-spoken? So this is like interesting dance. So then the other pillar um, that I connected with the spirituality one. So um, in this one, I um, so I was brought up Catholic in my home uh, for many generations. My family has been Catholic, and so um, there was always like a nervousness of of, of uh, even going against the dogma or the the beliefs um, in the family, so it it did take some time um, to even as I'm learning about the uh, what it is to be indigenous or like um, more and more of the traditions and how they were illegal, got mm-hmm. criminalized, and the different uh, mm. stories, right? So there's a lot of um, of anger that that brings up or that's there so so that's part of the story but the the thing that I want to really share is that um how I was able to um experience it and tap in was through my artistry so I realized Mm -hmm. that um my art making is very spiritual 
so then I started looking at like, okay, so, so how do I create art and what is art for me? So then um, in that moment, I decided, okay, I'm going to make art purposeful uh, um, in a space that is sacred. And so I started doing that. And so from that point, it was, it was a shift in terms of um, my battling of, of, of Catholicism and like what it is to even go against it. And like, what would my parents say and like all these like huge things because it's such a a backbone of uh, of our culture like right. in, in Mexico right and yeah, I'm sure totally a lot of you yeah. guys can yeah. resonate <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so and I didn't want to be disrespectful in a way of being like oh everything's wrong that you that you taught me because there's some really good core lessons that I still keep in my heart and I still live by them right so uh, as I was connected more into my art and including that um, way of connecting to the land and that's like land-based spirituality and connecting to the elements to the fire to the water to the earth and the air and like really honoring those ways of viewing and connecting to like our life and our living um, like a lot of space started to open up in my in my life and in my being mm -hmm. so um I just felt like this is the right thing to go to do and to focus yeah. on. So that was really, really beautiful in a way for myself and also including that in terms of the, the students that I had. So the, the classes that I taught and the different uh, programs that I was running. So including that kind of uh, framework yeah. was oh, so powerful. It was so palpable. Was like, yeah. Wow. How is this? <laughs> happening like when we talked right it's like okay this is what it is um you can see like a bright light around people and you can see the colors and you just start seeing things yeah it's just like we're just so spiritual we don't even know right it's like spirituality is just a, an aspect of hum, human being human right. nature yeah so even this mystifying it right oh i like the word mis mysticism but like mm, decoding it like yeah. bringing it away from like oh only a few people get to be spiritual yeah you know? oh it's my like, gosh no. I agree yeah I totally agree yeah it's it's almost like you know we can sometimes put those feet like before you really tune into you, your own spirituality it's like you see other people who are like I don't know, like a psychic or a tarot reader, you know, we think they're so magical and they're very special. And it's like, we actually all kind of have those gifts if we just really tune into them. Right. So, yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about, you know, I know that you love to empower women. You love to support um, uh, people in the queer community as well. We'll chat some more about that, but um, let's talk about how you, embody everything that you mm -hmm. that you do and how you see like I hate to say like what's missing in women's life because I feel like we're we're never really missing anything it's just about kind of like realigning and finding what is best for us but for a lack of a better word right now I'll just say like how do you see like how are you able to help somebody like fill the gap for them in their lives mm -hmm. and embody all the things that can really make them step out as you know that glorious person that they're meant to be yeah definitely thanks for the question one of the things that I've realized is uh recovering that inner connection so um a lot of us are always looking outside of us for the solutions like um find the answers out there but um what I teach my students and my clients um is to how to learn and keep that inner connection so um because from that inner connection is where so many answers like all the answers are there from within and from within is that is from where you connect to divine and to those uh answers of the universe god creator um, you know, who, who, you, who you connect with and how you connect with to the all. Um, and so I've realized that um, it is a, it's, it is the way that I, 
I kind of fill in that gap or yeah. you know what's <laughs> missing yeah and I guess it's, I guess it's just like my gift you know it's like I since little um people would just tell me their secrets and I would be like ah, okay what do I do well I'm like I'm keeping them you know safekeeping okay thank you for sharing I feel honored okay and then more and more, right? So, so I start realizing it's like, oh, it's come. It's I start speaking Spanish. It's like creating a, a cocoon space for people to um, figure out what's happening within. Because they would tell me like, you know, um, it's the first time I even hear this for myself. I didn't know I was so angry with a certain person, or, or like a memory just happened, and I never knew that that happened to me. It's like, oh, what do I do with this? So then from those kind of instances of facilitation, like when my early 20s, I decided to, okay, you know what, I need to do more training to be able to hold these spaces of raw transformation mm-hmm. and within people. And then from that, um, uh, and also from my story, it's like, how do I connect how to find the answers? Like I felt I could do so much for, for people, but I couldn't do it for myself. Mm, so yeah. I was like how is this like what is this I don't understand so um from learning a lot of uh different practices like Reiki um learning like the energetic body how it works the the energy centers um boundaries within like the spirit so like spirit realm or like energy um bodies as well as going to theta healing and really looking diving deep into the issues of why maybe one can't connect to oneself it's like a huge block that happened in like their mother in the womb that doesn't allow you to connect to yourself anymore so it's like uh-huh. all these different ways of of yeah of allowing a, a person to be fully optimal like fully alive and, and happy and well um so that's how yeah that's how I, I um I like to give to the world or like aportar you know yes gift. Yep. something and uh support oh, a little grain of salt <laughs> my yeah. little grain of salt exactly yeah. uh-huh. and uh, the other one's human design like like this thing of like oh my god I can read people so well I can tell them like you know what like did someone pass away and be like oh just just last week I'm like oh yeah I can feel that person there they want to tell them this, um something it's like okay can I ask you you know can I can I tell you a, a message that's coming through from yeah. your deceased one so doing that for them and then coming home, be like, okay, I can't figure out myself. Be like, I don't understand yeah. this. So for example, human design really helped me with that. And understanding it's like, oh, as a projector, you give so much good advice, like a, as a, um advisor t- to the world, but uh, advising to yourself, is going to be a little more trickier. You got to learn some things, um, deprogram. So we're like the most programmed um, as the types. So yeah, that's, I could keep going, but yeah. please stop me if <laughs> I'm going I think too long. you you brought up some really interesting modalities that I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. Like, um, well, maybe not, maybe maybe not a lot of people. Maybe we could touch on a couple of things really quick. But things like womb healing that I've heard of that, but to me, that's just like it blows my mind because I'm like, how 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 is that possible? I mean, I guess it is possible because I feel like you know, as a mother, somebody who's had two kids, it's like, I do feel like I have a connection or I had a connection with my babies when they were in my belly. Right. So it's like, yeah, that makes sense, you know, but it's still, it's just like kind of mind blowing to think that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much, there's so much that we don't even, um, comprehend in our everyday life, but I feel like in your soul, you you know it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, I like to provide that for that space of, of remembrance of um, the complexity of, of who we are. Mm-hmm. And like as mothers, like I always thank mothers, like, thank you so much for bringing humans to this world. <laughs> like you're bringing a human life, a, a whole being through your body. It's just like incredible. And I, I can't imagine like you're together in one body like for nine months it has to, it has to create some kind of re- re- reverberation in like the yeah. mo- molecules like you know in, in like all levels you know so um yeah so I'm, I'm very curious about uh going deep in uh 
like uh, even like quantum physics, you know, like how does it work? And, and quantum physics is looking at these things, you know, of like um, uh, frequency and how like uh, sound is, is super powerful, right? It's like everything's yeah. made of, of waves. So therefore, you know, sound, sound healing and music is like incredible for our well-being. Um, I say as color, right? They're waves. So it's like colors create shifts in within our psyche, within our mood, um so it's it's just so much that we I guess uh we forget you know as we're living our lives <laughs> it's like, yeah oh. that's so right? true or even nature you know it's so oh, it's yeah. really quick story for everybody so I um I yesterday was a holiday so my kids were both home and I signed up for a half marathon next month because I was like, I need something on my calendar <laughs> because I've been really wanting to get back into running. And I just kept, and I'm, to be honest, life has been busy and I have a client early mornings, most days of the week. And I'm not about to wake up even earlier than I already do. So I've just been like, okay, I'm not just not the time of my life right now. I'll get there. Like I'll figure out a way eventually. So then I started, my daughter started going to daycare. So I had a little bit more time. And um, so I'm like, I have to put something on the calendar because that's like, then I'm going to really stick to a training schedule. So yesterday I was supposed to run, but the kids were home and it was, you know, my husband was working from home too. So I could have left them and gone, but then my son wanted to watch a movie and I was like, I want to bake muffins and watch a movie with him. You know, like the run can wait. So Anyway, today I was like, okay, well, I'll run on the treadmill while my daughter is napping. But then I was like, oh, do I really want to run on the treadmill on a beautiful day? I'm like, what if I just run in my backyard? <laughs> so uh -huh. I did two and a half miles in my backyard and my like driveway. And it's, yeah, I don't have the biggest yard. <laughs> so most back and forth, I think, yeah, but just, you know round and round like I have a wow. car too so I did a few rounds up there then back down then in the driveway <laughs> so yeah 30 minutes of running in my backyard but I got it done and it you know it was so much better than being on a treadmill in my basement you know I was outside it's really a beautiful day here today mm -hmm. and I was like I don't care if I'm wacky I don't care if my neighbors are like what is she doing like it doesn't matter <laughs> like, it feels so good to like stick to my goal and be outside and get it done <laughs> and be back, yes. you know, be back in time for our podcast report recording. So, um, yeah, I think the, the lesson there is just that I knew I wanted nature. I knew I wanted to be out in nature because it's, you know, it's been one of those weeks where I'm like, gosh, I just, I need a little bit more of like, calmness in my life right now like I've been trying to do a little too much I feel like and I was like I need a lot of nature right now I just need to like breathe fresh air and go for my runs um so it's really about like just tuning back into like you tune into your body right and like stay close to nature oh, yes. and that always makes such a such a big difference in our energy levels <laughs> at least for me it always does yeah definitely it's such a uh potent medicine yeah it's just such a mirror to a sacred mirror to who we are you know it's, it's it puts us back into oh yeah, yeah. when you said calm peace like oh just Not dropping alignment. all the mind focus yeah do, 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 you know? it's like ah oh, it's all good yeah. I'm better than I thought <laughs> totally I always think of running as like my it's like active meditation <laughs> because I'm, I'm almost able to kind of just allow my mind to maybe not get super quiet, but at least to not be so like yeah. sometimes I focus more like if I'm like, okay, I just need to figure out this one thing, like just give me like, give me that like, sign or give me like, let me know, like, which way I should go with it. You know, sometimes I get that when I'm on a run. Or awesome. yeah, sometimes yeah. I'll get like an idea and I'm like, okay, let me try this. Um, so yeah, I think that's why like as people ask me sometimes, like, why do you run? Like, and I'm like, it's not really 
it's a lot more for the mental health, like the, the, the kind of like shaking off the cobwebs and, and just being outside in nature as, as often as I can. I mean, if I have to really run out inside, then I have to, but for the most part, I really prefer to be outside. Mm -hmm, Definitely. It's beautiful. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, swimming, but yeah, tell me. Yeah, no swimming, swimming too. I'm not a swimmer. I used to be, um, maybe one day I'll get back to that, but yeah, it's just swimming. I don't know. It's there's, there's a little bit of a fear. I think that has like gotten Mm. in me as I've gotten older. So I got to work on that one. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Should do a a little, uh, trial, uh, if you're interested, (laughs) we'll go through we can do like a little mini session of a yeah. water connection with you. Oh, and can... <laughs> I'm a water sign. I'm a cancer. So I'm, I don't know. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. There's no. definitely something there. And especially if you, there. yeah, and as a cancer, you're, it's a mother sign, sign of the mother. So <gasps> interesting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're, you've got some ideas. <laughs> One more question for you because, yes. um, um, as an ally of the queer community, I just also want to talk with you about how you integrate helping working with the queer community and all this wonderful work that you do. Um, I always Mm -hmm. like to advocate and, you know, um, I've had, I think at least one other person, um, who works with the queer community. Um, so yeah, Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about how you integrate that work. Yeah, um, I really wanted to make space for other queer people or or people that are like even in the wondering stage of um, it's like, am I, am I ex- again, ex- exploration, the questioning, um, just to like um, ease out in the, in terms of uh, um, having to perform something. So, and be like, okay, this is like a, super queer space where you can just be like doesn't matter we don't have to use um any any titles if they're not interested or labels or you even have to touch on, on it but um because like um uh, it's really awesome to be able to um create a space where there's like have you heard of queer futurity i'll go i'll, I'll nerd out a little bit no i've never so, heard of that <laughs> Okay, so it's one of it's one of those um, theories, big bodies of work that started, I think, in the nineties. Uh, it was uh, in uh, Munoz, I think his last name is. So anyway, so it was all talking about um, how uh, queer futurity would be the space where uh, then gender is not even existence. Huh. So it's like either where we don't even have to, there's like no more fighting of like having to um, showcase or to prove that who you are or how you identify. So I I was in love with this theory of like in the future, ima- just imagining in the future, you, you didn't even have to, uh, if you don't even want to, you don't have to gender yourself. You can be like genderless or you can be like one day, okay, today I'm like more female. I'm like a femme or woman today I'm just um you know non-binary so it's like just like binary is goodbye I don't even know I'm I'm in the spectrum or (laughs) uh yeah so just this idea of um of like freedom in terms of uh, in terms of gender was just fascinating for me and then also going through my own experience of uh, coming out of uh, embracing my own sexuality and even still being in the in the exploration and knowing that I'm a very curious soul and I will be in an ex- future or endless exploration yeah and sometimes <laughs> words doesn't really encompass who you are so kind of like bringing that experience from academia of like opening my mind to be like oh wow like there's so much possibility even having like thousands of words for gender and you can just mm-hmm. create your own so that in terms of uh, your own like own sexual um, uh, experience, like for myself and, and also being in a lot of uh, different communities, uh, queer communities, there's just always a huge need 
of having safe spaces or, or brave spaces or just containers where you feel like ah oh, you can just like you know and just yeah. be so I really wanted to provide that for for oh. people yeah and provide uh the spiritual mentorship and training um that I, I do see that there's not a lot of of even like women of color providing these uh teachings mm, so I thought you know what para mi gente you know Latina Spanish speakers also wanted to provide that and then for uh queer um gender queer people people to just be like okay we're here we're weird we're cool <laughs> we're different <laughs> let's just um yeah let's just be be and and learn in, in this space that feels yeah. like home oh that's great that's great that you've created this safe space for um for people who really might need support you know just because yeah. of everything else anyway that they're probably dealing with exactly so, to wrap it up today thank you so much um for being my guest today i'm so excited that we have connected i feel like you have so many cool things to say and stories so people you definitely you. want to follow Vedo. um so people want to follow you somewhere anything that you have coming up tell us where they can go to learn more yeah. about you yeah, right now uh, I'm very active in LinkedIn and in Instagram. So LinkedIn Vero Diaz, you can find me, uh, you know, with several of us, you can put integrative wellness coaching and uh, on Instagram I'm in, as vero.diaz.elevates. So that's there. And uh, I just launched a really cool thing. I just launched a uh, art and spirit shop. So I'm selling my art there. Uh, prints where you can get uh, an activation so so they're all created in in this way of like spiritual art of prayer of of codes and transmissions so you can check that in uh link in my bio in my instagram right and uh yeah and then i, I have this uh, really cool program it's called inner blooming and it's a coaching or a tr and a training where you learn all the things that i've been talking about so um, great so yeah, i'll share all those links in the show yeah. notes and um make sure you follow Vero. thank you again so much for being on here with me today and everyone i will see you all next time thank you for listening to the elevated femmes movement i would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast so please leave us a review if you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show please share it with them we need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, while growing a business that improves, not consumes, their life, and doing things in a smarter, not harder way. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.